hi guys welcome to my channel and welcome to another video in today's video i will be sharing so sort of the story of my daughter's birth um i should say the story of my rainbow baby's birth so yeah um my daughter turned five and um, recently and i thought it's time to share um the story of her birth uh, out there that is going through exactly what I went through or similar to what I went through just so that they know that there is hope there is hope and to share a hopeful story and a happy story uh, uh, in 2017 and this was after um, I'd suffered four miscarriages so I've had four miscarriages and I'll share the story of or my experiences where miscarriages in a separate video but this one is just to talk about her birth how she came about really um but yeah so i suffered four miscarriages so one at 20 weeks and the other three at eight weeks and then i just thought that was it that was it like when i had my fourth miscarriage the psychological impact that it had on me was huge well i hit it well but i just I just wasn't myself um I was depressed <laughs> I was sad all the time I was angry I was angry I was angry at the world like I just didn't understand why this was happening to me so I remember saying this is it like I'm not trying for another baby I don't want to get pregnant again because I didn't have pr problem getting pregnant I just couldn't stay pregnant um, anyway, I then decided to try again <laughs> because I just couldn't cope without having any children. I thought I'd just give it another try. I try again, and because I've had four miscarriages, I was under a um, gynecologist, so a specialist or consultant uh, at that point. So she had a plan. You know, she sat me down. We had a plan, and you know, she had told me things that I need to do the next time I get pregnant. So when I was pregnant with Nimsy, my daughter, the minute I found out that I was pregnant, I was immediately immediately put on baby aspirin. So I was using baby aspirin. I was on blood thinners. I was on um, vaginal um, progesterone suppositories. Yeah, suppositories. And there was a plan also to have a circlage. So a cervical stitch so i also have a weak cervix so that was what one of the reasons why i had a miscarriage at 20 weeks so i had this plan so the minute i found out with nimc i started using all this medication and i think when i was about um eight to about nine weeks um i remember this because it was close to my birthday so my husband had booked as a holiday to Germany and to Paris for my birthday and so the day we were meant to travel to Paris from Germany I started bleeding and it happened to be on my birthday a day before my birthday and I started bleeding and I thought here we go again you know like this is it it's happening again and I just started blaming myself I was like you know you said you weren't gonna try again why why did you do this to yourself you know I just it was one of the worst birthdays that I've had. Actually, it's the second worst birthday that I've had. I've had worse birthday. That was the second worst birthday ever. And anyway, I just said, you know what? Just enjoy your holiday. You know, you can't stop this from happening. It's happened four times. Just enjoy your holiday. And I did. Anyway, we came back to the UK and then I went for a scan and everything was fine. I don't know why I was bleeding. You know, it happens in pregnancy. Um, but, you know, the feces was fine. Everything was fine. And I carried on my medication. And like I said, we had a plan for me to get a circlage once I get to about 16 weeks. So 16 weeks came and I went to hospital to get my stitch, my cervical stitch. I'll talk about that in a separate video. But we got there, I was um, put on the general anaesthetics and I remember waking up, coming to um, 
And I remember speak, asking the midwife or the nurse, the lady, anyway, that was there. And I kept asking her how the circulate went. Did you do it? Was it, was it successful? Was, you know, was it stress-free? And I just remember her saying, you need to speak to the doctor. And I thought, uh oh, here we go again. You know, this, that just doesn't sound good, does it? You know, when someone tells you to speak, you have to wait for the doctor. I just started thinking of different things. I was like, oh my God, it's bad news. Anyway, I got moved to recovery and the consultant, the doctor came to talk to me. He came to talk to me. And I must say, he is the most, I don't know, straightforward, <laughs> blunt uh, man ever <laughs> that I've ever met. Like he, he, he was just straight to the point. He didn't put a sugar coat in it. He just, he was very honest about it, which to be honest is what you want, but you would expect him to have a bit of compassion. You know, if, if you're trying to, you know, tell someone something not, if you're trying to tell someone news that's not so good, you know, there's a way of, you know, relaying that message to someone. He just went straight in. He went straight in he said well um when we went in to put in your stitch your cervical stitch your circlage uh we realized that you were already three centimeters dilated so and your membranes were already bulging so um we didn't put the stitch in but i have to be honest i don't think it's gonna last long i don't think it's gonna last it's not it's not gonna take you up to 24 weeks and if you start um leaking if your water starts to leak uh you have to come back we have to take off the stitch and um you're gonna have to lose the pregnancy pretty much it and i remember asking him if they put the stitch in <laughs> did you do the stitch he went yes we did but it's not gonna hold long because you know you're already you're already three centimeters dilated and then it walked off and I cried I cried and cried and I thought this is it I'm gonna lose her again I didn't know what she was at the time I was like I'm gonna lose this pregnancy again you know I just cried and cried and I thought to myself just try and get this pregnancy to 24 weeks just try just you don't know we don't know what's gonna happen so I left the hospital, went back for my appointment with my actual um, gynecologist and she said to me <laughs> that she got called on the day that they were meant to do my stitch. She got a call at home and that day was on Boxing Day so I guess she was off. She got a call uh, at home and she was told that I've already started to dilate and they weren't going to do the stitch at all. They weren't going to put the stitch on. They weren't going to place the stitch, the circle edge on my cervix at all. And then she pleaded. She pleaded with the doctor and said, you know, this lady have been through a lot. Could you at least try? Which is why they did it. So, you know, they weren't even going to put the stitch on at all. And I'm very thankful for that lady, wherever you are. Thank you very much because you saved my child. You saved my baby. And so anyway, she did another scan and then she found out that I'd fully dilated to my stitch. So the only thing holding the baby in was the stitch and she put me on strict bed rest. So I was on strict bed rest. So I couldn't put any pressure on my cervix. So I was on pelvic rest, so I couldn't do the do. I <laughs> couldn't stand for too long. I wasn't allowed to sit. For too long she just said just be on your side for, throughout the pregnancy just make sure you're on your side throughout the pregnancy and that's pretty much what i did the only time i got up was to get something to eat to use the ladies 27 weeks um gestation i had an appointment with my gynecologist and she did a scan again i had so many scans <laughs> when i was pregnant with her i started having scans at six weeks <laughs> and yeah so i had a scan at 27 weeks and my gynecologist said that she didn't think that i was gonna carry the baby past 28 weeks so she was so sure that uh, my daughter was gonna come 
the following week she was convinced that the baby was coming the following week so i had to get um steroid injections so yeah so they gave me steroid injections to develop her lungs in case she came early so i had i think i had two doses of that and they hurt they're very painful they sting my husband had to go away um so a friend of his was getting married so he had to go to manchester and so i was at home by myself and i remember that evening the evening he left i just had this really bad toothache this really awful it was painful it was really painful toothache and so i started leaving the bedroom i was in i was in the bedroom because i was on bed rest so I started going back and forth to get painkillers. So I'd get out of bed, come into the kitchen to get painkillers and I'll go back. And then after like two hours, I didn't even wait the whole four hours because it's just too painful. Kept going back and forth, kept going back and forth. And then I thought, oh, I needed the loo. I needed the ladies. So I went to the toilet. I'd done a number one. <laughs> Came back to bed <clears throat> and I just felt this trickle. <laughs> this trickle this wet <laughs> liquid you know trickled down my legs and i thought did i forget did i not finish doing a wee <laughs> do i need to go back and finish and then i thought i don't think that's a wee and then i tried to strain a little bit and then i got a bit more trickle and i thought uh oh my waters have gone or my waters are leaking so i was like what am i gonna do like my husband's not here I don't want to go to hospital by myself and I was told that if my waters go I need to come to hospital because they need to get out the stitch because I've got this foreign thing in my body and that could cause uh, infection and obviously when you're pregnant you don't want infection so I, I was told that I, whenever I start to leak or my waters go I need to come back to hospital so I was like what do I do so I ran my husband and uh, actually it's not the day that was it wasn't the day he left i think it was like day two of day three i can't remember but i was meant to be back that day actually it was meant to be back on that day so i called him and said well i think my water's leaking but i still feel fine you know there's nothing uh i'll just wait for you to get back now i live in brighton and my husband was in manchester so i knew it was going to take him a good few hours to get back uh, and obviously he wasn't going to leave at 2 in the morning but I waited, I waited till about 10 or 9am and I, I remember sending a colleague of mine a message and she said oh you need to go to hospital because if you want to go you need to